traveled over land and water, ended up on the shores of our country. They face discrimination. They face prejudice. They built a community. They held tightly to each other, and slowly, but surely, they built the better future that they imagined that they could build, and a country that promised itself. There are many of you in this crowd whose families, whose own story, is the same as that one. It could be Jimenez, Martinez, or O'Rourke. This one is Kennedy. That story is our story. That's right. Those who we stand and fight for today, the stories of our own fish. I don't want to be in the bush. It's the courage that any parent has for their own child. That's right. What would a mother do? On Father's Day, we recognize that universal truth. That humanity does not come with a citizenship or with a green card. La humanidad no requiere una tarjeta verde. So we stand together. We fight for each other. We fight for these kids. We fight for their parents. Not just because they are kids, but because this is the story of our country. This is the nation that we have built. And no one, no president, no administration is going to take that from us. to see so many of you in this country that right now at this moment I am so proud of because each one of you has decided at this most moral of moments that you are going to stand up and be counted. This morning, uh, my seven-year-old Henry called me and he wanted to wish me a happy Father's Day. And he asked me why I was going to Tornillo. <laughs> and I tried my best to explain it to him. I said there are kids who have traveled 2,000 miles with their parents. And just at the moment that those moms and those dads here on Father's Day thought that they had felt and found shelter and safety and refuge and asylum. Their kids were literally taken from them. In the Border Patrol Station in McAllen, the busiest Border Patrol sector along the 2,000 miles of the U.S.-Mexico border, the busiest station in McAllen during the busiest shift of that 24-hour period, I met a 27-year-old mother and her seven-year-old daughter who had fled 2,000 miles from Honduras to come here to this country as countless of generations before us have done as well. She fled terror. She fled death. She fled here for her daughter. And hours after finding what she thought was safety, that seven-year-old girl would be taken from her. And we have no idea, if we're honest with ourselves, when or even if they will be reunited again. We would like to think, and we try to tell ourselves, this is not America. This is not us. No. No. We do. No. This is not America. And at this moment, this is America. Yeah. This is us. Yeah. This is what we are doing. Yeah. Yeah. There 
there is an open question about who we are as Americans, whether we are a country that would continue to do this. 2,000 times so far in the last 45 days, kids have been taken from their moms, from their dads, detained at places just like this tent city here in Tornillo. And let me remind you that more than 100 years ago, a young man named Marcelino Serna came to this country, came here to be with his family, came here for opportunity, came here because he was inspired by us and the idea of America. And when this country decided that she was gonna go to war, he signed up. Though he's what we would call today undocumented, though his drill sergeant said, Serna, this is not your fight. Every single man in this unit is going over to Europe but not every single one of them are gonna come back home. Why don't you stay here with your family? Shame. And he said, no, I'm going with you. This is my country, this is my fight. He returns to Texas. He was a highly decorated soldier. And this, this international crossing, this port of entry, this bridge, this connection to Mexico and the rest of the world is named after him. This is the Marcelino Serna yes. International yes. Crossing. Yes. Just literally feet from here, we are holding kids, more than 200 kids, who don't know when they're gonna see their families again. What a shame. Shame. We are doing this. Shame. True. 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 100% of the families who try to cross into this country seeking asylum. When I asked that 27-year-old mother in the McAllen Border Patrol Station, why did you not cross at one of these ports of entry and lawfully petition for asylum? She said, tenía miedo. She didn't know where to cross. And one of the Border Patrol agents admitted the cartels control the crossing points. They decide who crosses and where they cross and when they cross. She was doing what any single one of us, what That's any right. human being would do for their child, yes. for their family. We are punishing her for it. We stood up. I gotta tell you, I am so proud and love every single one of you for what you are doing right now. I just met Angela, who drove from Rockport, Texas. Rockport, Texas. That was the first place that Hurricane Harvey hit. She said seven homes on her block were flattened. There was loss of life. There was loss of every worldly possession. And so many of us did what you did today. We went to Rockport and to Port Arthur and to Beaumont and to Houston and to Nome and to Port Aransas and all of the communities that needed our help. And now here's Angela driving here to Tornillo to be with us at our moment. I've met people from Midland, from Lubbock, from Santa Fe, yeah. from Austin, from New York, from Boston, from Arizona, California, from everywhere. Let me do this. Let me do this because I want these kids to hear us right now. I want you wherever you came from, to make the loudest noise that you can, based on where you came from, say your city as loud as you can on the count of three. One, two, three. today to bear witness, literally, 
to share this story, what we know to be happening, so that it's on the conscience of every single one of us, and all of us own it. And we are here also to bear the burden of what we now know to be happening. And I want that burden to be so uncomfortable for so many of us that it forces us to act. It places the public pressure on those in positions of public trust and power to do the right thing. For the I'm so proud of you, thank you. Yeah,